So in this tutorial, you are going to learn you are going to learn how to use the Elm programming language to write basic programs using different constructs of the language, and we are going to be using IntelliJ. I'll call this Elm Starter, and at this point, we have Elm in IntelliJ. I'm going to show you how to add this to IntelliJ uh, after now. So I'm going to call this Elm Starter. So it's going to be for absolute beginner in M programming language and it's basically designed for people who would like to learn some functional programming language. So M is a, a pure functional programming language just like Scala and I recommend you learn it because you have a whole lot of things you can do with the M programming language. You can even ex extend it if you want. Now we have this uh, main.elm, so this is the initial file that is provided when you start a new program, Elm program. Now to add Elm support, uh, like I showed you before, you simply go to IntelliJ and go to Preferences and there you can find uh, plugins right here and from pl uh, plugins you search for Elm, Elm and you can see uh, we have Elm, you simply add it. So this is what we have right here. I just did it uh, before now. So we are going to be covering the following. We are going to be covering values, concatenation, uh, string concatenation, functions, if expressions, lists, tuples, and records. And we are going to be using the Elm REPL. REPL stands for read, evaluate, um, read, eval eval read, evaluate, process, uh, loop. Uh, if I can remember. So we are going to go to the terminal and we are going to enter Elm Ripple. So the, the objective of this tutorial is to make you learn the basics of Elm and see if it's something you like to do. And I recommend that if you want to have some skill or knowledge of programming, uh, functional programming, Elm is the way to go. So let's start from the first one, values. Values is the smallest building block in M. So basically when you enter one, it tells you it is a number. So this is the basic building block and it can enter an expression. An expression evaluates to a value, right? So here we have three minus four. And again, you can just enter times four. And again, you can just say, divided by four. This time you have a float and it's telling you the data types of these values. All the expression you see we are, is going to be interactive. So we are going to even be writing our function, uh, functions right here, right? So if you hit, if you, if you enter something in the prompt and you hit the enter key, it's going to evaluate. Again, let's try something more interesting. So I'm going to say six to the power of, six to the power of three gives us two, one, six, and that's a number as well. Let's do some things with string. Another uh, value is going to be string. Let's say hello, and it tells us this is a string. And let's concatenate. Now let's try to concatenate two strings. Let me say, uh, please subscribe. Uh, subscribe to, and then I'm going to concatenate it with the next part. Plus plus is a concatenation operator. So I'm not going to enter my channel and if I hit the enter key now we have the result and it gives us a string, we concatenated two strings. So that's basically how to work with our values and uh, concatenation as well, how to concaten concatenate two strings. So note that the plus plus operator is used for concatenation. Now, if you try to do something like use one single plus, let's see what happens. It's going to give us an error because you can't use a single plus, which is actually an arithmetic plus operation on a string. All right, so let's move on to the next part. Let's talk about functions now. Interestingly, in functional programming, our functions are also values. The reason is because we have a function that transforms a string. Let's say, for instance, we have this function called add that takes a number a and b and returns a plus b. So this is a basic function in, in, uh, in M. And we have a function that takes a number 
takes a number, takes another number, and returns a number. So if I say add and specify three, uh, four, five, you have the product is nine, because this add, this add, you see, this function is actually a value, right? So what we specify like this a and b, we call it the function parameters. And when we call the function, we want the function to do some calculation and we specify some values. Those values are called the function argument. So take note, a function transforms its values to another value. So let's try a, a function that concatenates a string with another string. So let me call it greet and greet is going to take the name of the person and it's going to return hello and concatenates it with the person's name. So it's going to be name. And we have a function that takes a string and returns a string. So if I say um, hello and say kind son is going to, oh, what happens? Um, so, ah, sorry, the name of the function is great. I mean, I just messed up here. Okay, so let me clear my console. Uh, control L clears your console. So if I say greet and specify kind son, and you can see it displays hello kind son. Let's try a function that actually takes two parameters. Let's take, uh, try a function that takes two parameters. So I'm going to call this function greet2. Greet2 takes two parameters, two persons, and greet them both. So it's going to, it's going to take name one and name two. So one thing about the Elm programming language is that it's very um, uh, syntactically interesting because now you don't have all these commands, semicolons, and braces, and all these curly bra brackets. Okay, I need to place an equal sign. And so I'm going to say hello. So you're going to return uh, hello and name one and concatenate it with and literal and plus plus name two and this is this function. Yeah, so we have a function that takes a two strings and returns one string. I'll plan my console so if I call grid two and specify kind son and I specify the next name is Manuel and now it tells hello kind son and Manuel you can see how interesting uh, Elm programming language is you don't have all these commands and all these uh, calling braces and all of that other all these other things you have in other programming languages. So I recommend, I recommend, I strongly recommend you learn the Elm programming language. And generally in Scala, if you have this uh, in JavaScript, if you have grid two, if you want to call it, you are going to say something like you have kinds um, and manual. And this is actually how it works in Scala, right? I mean in Scala, right? Yes, both in JavaScript as well, this is how it works. All right, so we've covered functions. Let's now try to do something about conditional expressions. This is very, very interesting because every programming language, what makes a programming language interest, um, uh, what makes a programming language what it is, uh, is uh, expressions, conditional expressions. Or what I wanted to say is what makes a programming language intelligent. Yes, it's conditional statements. It's called a case. We are going to be talking about case a little later in the advanced or intermediate tutorial here. Let me create a function that takes a name and then greet this name if this name is uh, Obama. So I'm going to say greet um, name three. So this name three, um, we are going to check what it is. If it is Obama, then we, we are going to say hello, Mr. President. Uh, but if not, we are just going to say what's up. So I'm going to say if name is it uh, if name three is equal to equal to Obama then so here we're going to use then and we are going to return greet um we are going to say hello Mr President right and else this is else we are going to say Hello, my friend. 
So this basically a uh, function that uses a conditional statement to decide what the output is going to be based on what the argument that was passed in is. Why do we have this? Okay, so we have the function that takes a string and returns a string. So if I say hello, uh, sorry, greet, um, and specify kind term. So in this case, I'm not present. So it's going to say hello, my friend. But if I say greet, Obama is going to say hello, Mr. President. So this is actually how if expression works. The, what you're going to learn from here, what you take away is this then. Right, so in, in, in JavaScript, you don't use then, you maybe use curly braces and then use else and specify the block um, to be executed inside curly braces. But in this case, you use then, and this will um, avoid the stress of having to be writing, opening, and closing curly braces. All right, let's now go to the next one. So we've covered this four, let's go to lists. List is a list of numbers, all right? Every programming language have lists. So in M, it is not also an exception. We also can specify lists, which is a sequence of numbers or strings or any other thing um, in, in Elm as well. So uh, this is one thing that makes M similar to other languages. Uh, it, it, the way it handles lists tend to be the same. So this is a list of names, kind, son, um, gonna say Jaden, and the next one is Treasure, and finally I have Mac. So this, uh, this is a list of names, right? This is a list of names. So the end key says list of string, right? So it says list string, that is a type here. So you can enter as many values as you want. Again, you can just say scores. In this case, I'm creating a list of integers. So I'm going to say one, uh, scores, 34, 66, and, and so on and so forth as well. So you have what we have. So if I say scores, we have it, so it gives me the output. If, if I say names, it also gives me the output, which is a list of strings as well. There are a number of things about the list that you need to know. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is list of empty. So if I check, if I say names dot empty, if I say sorry, not names dot empty, if I say list dot is empty. Now, list that is empty returns either a true or false if this list is empty. If I say list that is empty names, it's going to return false. But if I say uh, names2, let's say I'm creating an empty list, names2 is equal to this, and I say list that uh, is empty, empty names2, you can see that it says true because that list is empty. Let's try another thing that's list.length. So if I say list uh, length, length, L E N L E N G T H and specify the list names. What is the length of this list? It's gonna be four, right? Four. So it counts the number, it counts the number of items in the list. Let's now try list.reverse. So these are the names, right? So these are the names. So if I say list.reverse. Reverse names is going to return a list that now uh, reverses the, the 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 content of the previous list. So if I say um, names are uh, like reverse name is equal to list dot reverse names, and um, if I now say names are, uh, we have this new list that has been created and assigned. So this is basically how it works. Um, let's say scores, these scores we created. So you can also say list of sorts. So list the sorts, uh, specify scores, and it sorts them in alphabetical order in, in um, it sorts them in, in, in increasing order. So I'm going to play my console. Now let's talk about uh, creating a, uh, a sequence. So let me see, um, adding, yeah, so I want to create uh, a function that adds one to each parameter. So let me call this function names add one. So if I say add one and I take a value, let's say num, and what is going to return is 
num plus one. So I have this function I've created and I want to create a new list. Let's say scores is equal to scores two, uh, scores one maybe is equal to a list of three, four, five, six, seven. And so if I want to now add one to all the items in this course, how do I do it? I have to use the map function, right? So the map function, the list.map is going to take two parameters. The first, it takes two arguments. The first argument is a function to apply. And the second argument is a list you want to apply the function to. So if I say list.map, so it's going to take this function, uh, I'm going to specify now, which is add one and apply to each of the items in the list and returns the output. So if I apply to scores one, um, let's see, why do we have this error? Uh, hmm, oh, name add one. I think I made uh, so I made some mistake here. So, um, so let's see. So we have name. So I made I made this mistake. So it's not going to be name add one. It's simply going to be uh, add one, right? So if I go back. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, but I don't think, I think I messed it up. Okay. So I think I, I messed it up here. So let me create a, uh, the function one more time. So let me just clear my console and say, add one. So you can also have a function that has the name like this is equal to, it takes a parameter, it takes a parameter n and returns n plus one. Okay. So I have scores one as well. So I want to add one to all of them. So I'm going to say list.map and it's going to ask me to specify the function I want to use. It's going to be add one and the list is scores one. So at this point, we have a new list. You can see one has been added to all the items in the list as you can see right here. I recommend you try making your own list and using the function like list.length, list.sort and other functions we've learned to manipulate this list. Now let's talk about something interesting that is called tuples. Now what is a tuple? Tuples are another useful data structure that can hold two or three values and each value can have any type. The common use is if you want to return more than one value from a function, you can use a tuple, right? So, so let's demonstrate how a tuple actually works. So let's assume we have a function that gets a name and gives a, and gives a message to the user, right? So let's say this function. So I'm going to write a function is short name and takes your name and it's going to say if a string dot length is less than or equal to 20. So a string uh, dot length your name is less than or equal to 20. Is less than or equal to 20. I'm going to say then uh, we are going to return a tuple true name accepted and else uh, it's going to return a tuple that says false um name rejected okay so this is about how tuple works so in this case we have it takes a string and returns this uh tuple of boolean and string right okay so let's try out this function so if i say is short name and specify kind son is uh is short name uh, let's see not fine is <laughs> so I think so it's actually his name so it's going to be his uh wait is it name is name or is shot name let's see uh I think it should be shot name right shot name yeah so it's shot name um it's shot name so it's not completely camel case so if I say shot name kind son, and you can see it says true name accepted. But if I enter a shot 
name and the shock hold local ban gold shade is name um, okay <laughs> other name yeah so it says false name rejected as you can see so in this case we have a tuple uh, that returns two uh, items inside the 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 inside brackets right let's now go out, let's now talk about something interesting and this is records number seven i think this will be the last item we are going to be talking about today so we're going to be talking about record a record can hold many values and each value is associated with a name think about it like a dictionary that has key values. So let's create a record. So I'm going to say uh, student, let's say student, student record. Student is equal to, and the record begins with a curly braces. So this is the first time you are going to be using curly braces in, uh, in Elm, but when you are talking about a record. So first, uh, first name is equal to Kingsley and um, normally, they, normally say we write the comma in the, last, in the second line. I don't know why. So that's one thing that's um, JC Kinsley Jesse, for instance. And I want to add age is equal to thirty four. And this time I'm gonna close the record. So let's just check that we make we don't have any mistake here. Okay, we don't have any mistake, but although this comma is mixed up, but it's fine. Okay, so you have this record that says uh, H34. Now, ordering of these does not matter. I think it tries to arrange the uh, fields of the record in alphabetical order. So if I come back here to say student, student, you can see it returns a student. And if I want to get the age of the student, I can just say student dot age, and it returns 34 number. You can also say student the first name and it also uh, student the first name and you can see it returns the first name as well. So we defined a record with three fields containing information about the student record, the first name, the last name and the age as you can see right here in the record definition right here. It is often useful to update values in a record. So what it means is that if you have this student, maybe you want to change uh, the last name or you want to change the first name, you want to change the age or something like that. Now, how do you do it? This is very, very important for you to know. So let me clear my console, I'm, sure I'm, I'm going to show you. So if you have students, you have this record and you want to change the first name, right? You want, you want to change only the first name. What do you do? I'm going to say, is, you are going to simply specify, um, so we have student, this is your original student, and you are going to use the bar. So what is happening here, so if I say first name is equal to uh, David Singh, so what is going to happen here is I've modified uh, this student first name without tampering with every other thing in the list. So if I run it now, you can see that the first name and the last name is Davidson. Now if I enter student, you see that the first name and the last name is actually the same. So this is what happens uh, when we say in functional programming, you can mutate the state. In this case, we are changing um, I'm making a copy of the student and then changing the last name, right? So you can also try it out yourself. So it's students and bar, you can age is equal to whatever it is. So maybe the student have grown up and 37 years old. So now you have 37 years old uh, student. And, uh, but the original student remains. So if you go back to student, we have the same age 74. But if you want to create a new student object, you can just say student 2 is equal to, and I'll do the magic we did, or did before. So it's going to take student, 
all the fields of the student and only modify the age to 100. And now we have student two. So if you have the original student is there, but student two is also there, as you can see right here. If you want to say these expressions, you'll say, I want a new version of student where his age is 100. So that's how to read it. Notice that when we updated some fields of student, we created a whole new record. So we are not modifying the original one. It doesn't overwrite the existing one. M makes sure, um, M's make this efficient by sharing as much content as possible. So if you want to update one, of 10 fields, the new record will share the other nine. So you keep the other nine and then update one. So I think I will be stopping right here. Um, I would like to say if you need more uh, tutorials on Elm, please look at the comment box, uh, the description of, description of this video. You'll see uh, the full Elm tutorial I made before now and also how to, how to build a simple application using Elm. And also check the website where I have M tutorials. I'm going to be making advanced, intermediate to advanced tutorials in M. In case you are interested, please do subscribe and also leave me a comment. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.